Okay, so here is part three of the Allen Belt Christmas special, and it's going to be Mr. Benjamin J. Grimm, Marvel's Thing. Because I guess, you know, Thing is just too general for them to trademark, so they have to be specific and say it's Marvel's Thing and not, you know, John Carpenter's The Thing or Godzilla vs. The Thing, which turned out it was actually Mothra. Why don't you just say it's Mothra? Come on. Give the lady some respect. There aren't that many female giant monsters. Give Mothra the respect she deserves. So, uh, again, uh, the artwork is very much based on the 1990s Fantastic Four cartoon because these action figures are based on the action figures that were based on the 1990s Fantastic Four cartoon. And once again, the cat is getting in my lap and nuzzling into my laptop. Here's, here's a little kitty. Everybody say hi to the little kitty. Isn't she sweet? Okay, you gotta go on the floor now. I will I will pet you later. She just loves having the attention. So she's a sweet cat, but right now she's getting in the way because we got business to attend to. I'm trying to trying to do a thing here. The, with the thing. So anyway, uh, like the invisible girl, he's got this little piece of tape at the bottom here. So I'm going to try to cut this. And then hopefully we can uh, open them up. And again, the, the way these packages are, are made is like, there's like a, a two pieces, it's like layers of cardboard here. So he's going to be a lot heavier. Because obviously he's a much bigger figure than the other two. He's much bigger than Mr. Fantastic, and much, much bigger than the usable girl. So, uh, right, right when I open the package, this fell out, and these are a couple of fists. So he's got some alternate hands. Very nice. Something I always like to have, as far as uh, action figures go. I figure when I display him, I'm going to display him with one open hand and one closed fist. So that's probably how I'm going to wind up doing that. And he also has two separate heads, which is nice, because that gives you some more options on how you might want to display old Benji. And you can see that he has the same uh, dark blue and white uniform that uh, Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Woman had. Only in this case, uh, it's just a simple pair of trunks, because he doesn't wear like a full jumpsuit like the others. So one of these heads has gritted teeth, and the other head has no teeth. And that's good for an old-school fan like me. I think about how Jack Kirby drew Ben Grimm, and he never drew him with teeth. He always drew him with just, like, an open gash of a mouth like that. So, man, this figure has some heft to it. I figure this one was, was probably kind of a loss leader. They probably spent a lot more money making this figure just in terms of the amount of plastic used than they did the other two. But, you know, I guess they figure you're going to buy all four of these. Most people are going to want to buy all four of these. So they're going to make back their money in some way or another. And it's worth noting that these figures are the same retail price of a regular Marvel Legends figure, but they also don't come with, uh, with, with Build-A-Figure parts. So, technically, it's a little bit more expensive, but I do feel like they put a little bit more, uh, a little bit more into this guy than they put into most figures in, in the Marvel Legends line, in terms of, certainly in terms of the material that they used. He's very well painted. Like, this would be one where they could probably just, just make an orange figure and call it a day, but no, he's got, he's got some, uh, Slight airbrushing to him to bring out some of the details. And, uh, you know, you can see, like, a lot of the rocky nooks and crannies. Uh, he does have, I think, a slightly more humanoid shape than I generally prefer for the thing to have. But, uh, you know, like, like with the articulation of the figure, that's just going to happen. They wouldn't be able to give him those weird tube-shaped arms like Burn like to draw him with. Uh, he's he's going to have to have, like, joints and things like that. But you notice he does have, like, abs. Like, he's got these four rocks there that are 
in the shape of abs and, you know, rocks that are in the shape of pecs. Whereas I kind of, I kind of want to be as shapeless as possible. Generally, that's, that's how I like to think of him. He's a thing, you know, he doesn't have elbows and he doesn't have abs and he doesn't have teeth. He's not a human anymore. He's, he's a thing. He got turned into a thing. So, but you know, a lot of that kind of stuff, just as far as like being an action figure goes, you're just going to have to have stuff like that. So you can fit in the joints and things like that. And, you know, it, it's it's subtle enough with like the abs and everything that I don't feel like it, uh, I don't feel like it's untrue to the character. I'll put it that way. So he still looks really cool. And uh, I'm really happy with how it turned out with a lot of the paint washes and stuff. Let's go ahead and We'll put all three of them together that I have so far. And uh, you can see that, that they, they look like a team. You know, they're all wearing that same uniform. Uh, technically, he's a little big for how Kirby drew him in the comics. This is kind of more how they drew him later, where he was, like, quite a bit taller and inhumanly large. Whereas Kirby drew him, like, about the size that, you know, he could put on a trench coat and a hat. And kind of, you know, wrap his face up in a scarf and dark glasses and, you know, blend in with humanity a little bit that way. This guy would not be able to do that because he would still be gargantuan. <laughs> but uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to pull off his head. And we're going to pop on the alternate head with the teeth. So we can see what he looks like with that. And it's not bad. It's a pretty good head. Honestly, like, even though, like I said, I prefer him without the teeth, because I'm a little more old school like that, this is still a great head, and I probably wouldn't mind if it was the only head that came with the figure, even if he does have teeth. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to switch back to the open mouth, and my cat is back in my lap again, but you can stay right there as long as you're not messing with the computer, or you know, getting in the way of the, the thing that I'm trying to shoot. That's fine. So, I don't want people to think that I'm being mean to the cat. I will be petting this cat later. But right now I'm trying to do a thing. And this cat was not in the room. This cat was out of the room doing something else until I started filming this video, and then all of a sudden she wanted to be involved. So, here's uh, one of those closed fists like I'm talking about. And I'm hoping maybe the articulation will be good enough, but it doesn't look like it quite reaches. I kind of wanted to do a sort of thing where he was like pounding his fist in the palm of his hand, but it, it doesn't quite reach that far, unfortunately. But still, I think this is how I'm going to pose him, where like you can have a little bit of expression in this hand, but at the same time, you've got like a, a nice clobber in time kind of hand. Like, I bet I could get him into a really cool pose where he's about to just knock somebody right out. Oh, look at that. That's awesome. Can you imagine him going up against the Hulk? Like, posing it on, on the shelf that way? That would be really cool. So, he's got, like, a really good amount of articulation for such a large figure. And I feel like you could get him into a lot of, like, really dynamic sort of poses. I think Jack Kirby would be proud. So, uh... So yeah, that's uh that's the thing. Uh, he's probably out of the three that I've opened the best, and uh, that's why I saved him for last. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, he is definitely a recommend. I recommend all three of these, uh, especially if you're a fan of the Fantastic Four, or if you're just a, a collector of Marvel Legends in general. Like I kind of feel like the Fantastic Four uh, are characters that are iconic and important enough that. Even if you're not a huge fan of the Fantastic Four themselves, you want to have them in your Marvel Legends collection because it's not really a Marvel collection without the Fantastic Four. I mean, they're the ones that started it all. That was the first real comic of the Marvel Universe. So, uh, you know, you had Golden Age comics where characters would cross over before, but, but the Marvel Universe really started with Fantastic Four number one. So, uh, like I said, this is the third part of my review of the uh, the vintage Fantastic Four figures. Uh, I'll probably get the villains at some point, but I certainly want to get the Human Torch. Uh, like I said, I, I kind of suspect, since all of these were presents from my cousin Amy, and again, if you're watching, thank you again. Merry Christmas. Uh, 
since uh since she she got all of these for me, I, I kind of suspect that she would have gotten me the Human Torch also, but Amazon just hasn't delivered it yet. So I will probably at some point between today and tomorrow talk to her on the phone, and she'll probably tell me whether or not she got it and if I should wait on it or if I should just go ahead and go up to the Walmart and grab one before it's sold out. <laughs> but uh, but I'm really happy with uh, the three that I got. Uh, they're awesome figures. I, I definitely recommend them to anybody. Uh, thanks again, Amy. This is this is a really great Christmas present. I really appreciated it. And uh, I guess that's pretty much it for this time. Uh, I might have a fourth part later if Amazon winds up bringing that back today. But if not, uh, I want to wish you and yours a Merry Christmas, a Happy Holiday, a Happy New Year. Uh, I've got other videos that I still need to upload. But I'm going to make these a priority, and uh, I'm probably going to have a few more that also are going to be up this week, because I've got a lot of Masters of the Universe that I found, and I've got some G.I. Joe, uh, some some G.I. Joe classified stuff, and uh, I really need to get those up. I've been lazy about it this week, but, uh, but that's pretty much it for this time. Uh, if, if I see you again tonight, it'll be because I have that Human Torch figure. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and all the fun YouTube stuff down below. Let's talk a little bit about Fantastic Four action figures and which ones you think are the best ones. Honestly, I kind of feel like this wave of figures knocked it out of the park. I'm really happy with them. Uh, I grew up in the 80s and read Marvel Comics all through the 80s and the 90s. And these are the Fantastic Four uniforms that were probably in most of the comics that I read when I was, while I was growing up with the, uh, the blue with the white. Which, like I mentioned in an earlier video, originally it was supposed to be black and white, but you know how it is with comics. They wind up, you know, just getting more blue and less black in terms of the uniforms. It happened with Batman, and it happened with the Fantastic Four. Uh, so that's pretty much it for this time. Thanks for spending uh, part of your holiday with me. Uh, I know that a lot of people are lonely during the holiday season, and I usually wind up working on Christmas Day, so uh, if uh, if you're the type of person that, you know, you're lonely this Christmas, and, you know, you just want to watch YouTube, but there's nothing else new that's up, I'm glad I was able to put something new up today, so uh, at least you've got, uh, you know... About an hour or so worth of some dork talking about Fantastic Four action figures to keep you entertained. So uh, that's it for this time. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.